the thing. Being diagnosed with a mental health illness can lead you into a situation where that is all you focus on. You need to try and get yourself better so you try and get some help from others in the same situation. Sometimes online, sometimes at meetings of like-minded people. Nothing wrong with that. Is it really tackling your problem though? Lena Mukherjee is here. She's organised some workshops to help you try and move on with your condition. They coincide with World Mental Health Day, which by the way is tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. Thank you for having me back on the show. No problem at all. Let's talk about what these um, these these workshops are all about. You just handed me a leaflet. This is very interesting because it says creating a toolkit yes. for well-being. What's in the toolkit? We'll have to find out. But they are a combination, Mark, of both skills, so things you can learn to help yourself manage stress, but more importantly for me is about information because once you know what's going on, what's going on inside your body and some terminology and vocabulary can be incredibly empowering and can reduce stress quite a lot because once you know what's happening and you can do something about it, it's amazing what it does the effect in a very positive way. So that's what the sessions are about and an invitation very much for people to come together, share stories, share life and actually say, oh that worked for me, oh that happened to me and it breaks down and almost normalises part of the human condition to experience stress. So the toolkit itself is a, is a whole eclectic range of skills, sharing, information and more. Would it be fair to say, Lena, that this isn't necessarily you arriving um, into into the, the, the venue in question with a toolkit and say, right, here you are, here's a magic cure. Mm. This is more, correct me if I'm wrong, it yes. sounds like a toolkit which is empty to start with and other people put the tools in. Correct. And I add some... Um, information as I do and I, add, I stoke the fire by getting discussion going and actually exactly it's about empowering people to realize they've got the resources within themselves and I for me from having been in that situation 21 years ago when I faced a very stressful life situation um, the things have helped me so I'm going to share some personal anecdotes also from my professional life but really it's about them you know, we've got hundreds of years of experience coming into that room at Nottingham City Library, Central Library tomorrow, where people have ways of dealing with what they have, otherwise they wouldn't be here today. So you've been talking about stress. Yes. I just wonder, you know, who is this aimed at? Do you, do you have to have been diagnosed with some kind of condition? Uh, who, who are you aiming this at? Anyone and everyone who wants to know about stress, but actually wants to help themselves or possibly to, to find out more to help either family members, colleagues, even people at work and friends that you know who are suffering in silence. So it's for anyone and everyone to come along and, and share and learn. Mm. Yes. So, you know, right across the board, because, you know, I know you, you've mentioned stress quite a few times, but stress can, can come from so many sources and stress can come as well from an existing condition. Can't it? it certainly can. And living with my parents my mother was a diabetic so with mum suffering with fluctuating sugar levels um, affected her stress and it then affected her behavior how it then she she experienced her life and living with us and, and life and absolutely and it's how you manage that my husband Richard is visually impaired how he manages with no sight and you know sometimes we cannot change it's what how you deal with it and as I know it's that it's it's enabling people to move from a place of learned helplessness where we believe we have, cannot, can't affect our situation at all to moving towards actually I can do something I can't get rid of the problem I can't change the government well we can if we vote but that's not a story um, or the NHS situation or education but we can affect how we feel how we experience our body by some very simple things that can be done and it's amazing what effect that can have right I mean, I don't want to give away everything because obviously, you know, you're doing one of these tomorrow. There are some other dates that we'll mention as well. But what what kind of things? Because again, people might think, well, if this is easy for me to consume and then act on, mm -hmm. then that's one thing. Is is anything what you're suggesting in any way complicated? No, you're talking to an absolute simpleton here. <laughs> Get away! <laughs> oh yes, I, I believe in pragmatic techniques. Um, Making things simple, that's what I do. And it's amazing that I've been teaching this, Mark, for nearly over 20 years. And with all the yoga classes that I've taught and all the clients that I see, it is amazing the effect. 
years down the line, I still have, I have a student in Guernsey who moved to Guernsey, good old Mary Carey, lovely woman, if she's listening, um, who I taught at Silver Leisure Centre in, in year 2000, and she's still, she emigrated quite a while ago, emigrated back to, to Guernsey, and still says, Lena, I remember that class I came to, you saved me, and I still practice those today. Quote Mary. Right. Oh yes, it can have a profound life changing changing effect. Once you know you can affect your situation and you know the way that we breathe, the way that we eat, the way that we stand, the way that we sit, it's amazing, it changes your attitude because it's all interdependent. Systems are interdependent and that's what I'm gonna talk about. And we're gonna have a go. We're gonna actually do it in the sessions. Alright. So the first one of these, this is tomorrow uh, yes. at the uh, Nottingham City Library, 5.30 till 7. So again, you know, you might be thinking, oh, is it during work time? This is probably after work, you can go along. Uh, yes. uh, so that's the first one. There's another on the 17th, another on the 24th, another on the Royal Wednesdays on the 7th of November. Yes. Um, and your kind of background is very interesting. You've already kind of alluded to the fact that you're not coming at this as... Listen to me, I'm an expert, oh. I've read lots of books. You've been there yourself, so you know about Yes, I do. And, and still, because having been a child carer to my mum, you know, she became a diabetic in the days when diabetes wasn't known. We're talking 1973. So they didn't know what it was when mum was suffering what she was. I saw all that, I witnessed all that, I cared for her. Continue to care for my husband today, and I run a big practice. You know, if I didn't practice this, Mark, I wouldn't be sitting in front of you today. It's, it's as profound as that. Simple stuff done every day can make it's like brushing your teeth. It's looking after yourself, and you know, small steps can make a big difference. So, you don't put all your um, trust just into medical personnel, they have a fantastic place. But on a day to day basis, what you can do for yourself is amazing, and it's, and it's to make it interesting rather than mm -mm. yeah, because it is. It's fascinating when you start to learn how the body works. Mm. All right. Well, good luck tomorrow, and with Thank the you. subsequent sessions as well. Uh, Wednesday, tenth of October. That will be tomorrow, five thirty, Nottingham Central Library. It's ever good to see you. And I know you've got a lot of people tuned in from the West Midlands. Got to yes. say hello to old school friends. Yes. Uh, sorry, yes. I said old. Oh, I don't. Excuse me. That was a Freudian slip. Uh, uh, <laughs> do I look friends. Old? No, you don't. Oh. Friends from uh, just a few years ago. Who you went to school with? Yes, my lovely, lovely. Uh, what can I say? My old school. No, I'm, no, I'm doing it now. it now. I'm doing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Erdington Girls School on the Kingsbury Road in Birmingham. I hope you're listening in, girls, because we've reunited after 33 years, and it's fantastic. I feel like I'm 16 again. It's the last time we saw each other was 1985. There won't be points at the radio yet. Yeah? Oh, that was Murray. That was Murray. Thank you. You got better Brummie accent than me. Well, you know what can I say? Years of uh, honing. Ah. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank Lena you. Mukherjee on BBC Radio Nottingham, complete with not so old school friends. This is new from Macy Gray. It's all over you.